Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. So this video is about checking out this beauty here. So this is the Liquitex acrylic wash. And if you watched my latest video, you know that I made a review of Holbein acrylic wash. And I was really curious about alternatives. Reason for that is that Holbein brand is super expensive, hard to get in my country. And also I noticed that I'm still kind of scared to use my Holbein paints because they are just so, so very expensive. Currently I'm more in the sketching mode. I'm practicing a lot and I don't want to waste Holbein on that. So my assumption is they're probably not as good quality wise as Holbein, but I assume or I hope that they're still pretty good. If they turn out to be a bummer, then I'm pissed, but I really assume that they're gonna be all right. Those are a little cheaper. They come in bigger tubes, which is pretty nice. They come in a large variety of colors. And also I have noticed that before, but I see that they're actually advertised as professional. Another thing I wanted to show you is something that I find really amazing with these paints is when you take this lid off, it has like this sort of, you know, thingy. <laughs> what is it in English? And it's really good to get out just the right amount. On the front, you have a list of the pigments. And if you turn it a little, you also have the pigments here and also some information on the light fastness. This one is class one excellent, supposedly completely opaque. I already squirted out some color. It's because I did some swatches and also I painted the pot and I'm quite impressed. Painting the pot worked really well with these paints. So let me show you the swatches. I hope you can tell right away how vibrant those colors are. For these swatches, I used two layers of color and something that really, really surprised me is most of the colors aren't really opaque. This color here is said to be opaque, but even after two layers, the black stripe isn't covered. Out of the 15 different colors that I got, raw sienna and brilliant purple performed the best when it comes to opaqueness. Another thing that I noticed is even though they're matte, they're still quite the sheen to some of the colors, especially the gray and also this peachy color here. All right, so about the painting, as always, I'm doing my sketches in Procreate and this is usually how I go about it. I print out the sketch and since I'm gonna use the watercolor pad that is glued on all ends, I'm using the tracing paper technique in that case. I tape the tracing paper on the back side of it and then trace it onto this watercolor pad. So this is a premiere for me as well. This is a new paper that I'm gonna try for the first time today. It's the Canson Lac Forel Heritage. I can't speak French. This one's cold pressed and the nice thing about it is that it's 100% cotton, which is awesome because I gotta admit I'm not the biggest fan of Arches watercolor paper, at least not the cold pressed one. The nice thing about this paper is even though it's cold pressed, it's not as rough as Arches cold pressed, but still has a nice texture to it. It feels smoother though, and I think this is gonna be perfect for gouache. I'm really curious to see if I will be able to cover up those lines considering how the paints are not super opaque. will probably take 10 layers. So the weather has been pretty shitty lately. This is why I'm really excited for this piece. I'm in the summer mood, and so I'll have some ice cream before I start. Meanwhile, you can go and grab some snacks. And we're just about to start with the painting. Alrighty, a quick note. Since I gave you all features of acrylic wash in my previous video, today I will focus on what makes these paints different from Holbein acrylic gouache, which is possibly the most known and popular paint in this department. If you don't know what acrylic gouache is or have interest in Holbein acrylic gouache, I recommend you watch my previous video. Now let's talk about these paints. My main complaint about Holbein is how fast they dry. And I'm pleased to notice that Liquitex has longer drying times that are perfect for my liking. You don't need to wait impatiently for them to dry, but you have enough time to work with it. Blending and mixing colors on paper was easy. 
and so was adding more water to create transients. With Holbein, I noticed it would create those hard, dark edges real quick sometimes, and this didn't happen here since you have enough time to blend proper. Some of the paints I had on my palette were still wet after 20 minutes of not having touched them, whereas Holbein gets a hard coat in no time, creating those ugly clumps if you try to save some of the wet paint underneath. I feel Liquitex dries without clumps. It just gets thicker overall, but in this stage you can still revive it with water. The Liquitex colors are very vibrant. However, I could tell that it's less pigmented than Holbein. That means that you will need slightly more paint with Liquitex. It's not significant, but something you should know. To cover something nicely and evenly, you will need more layers. Holbein, albeit looking more watery out of the tube, to me feels stickier still. Liquitex has a beautiful consistency in my opinion. It is stickier than regular gouache, but in comparison to Holbein, it feels creamier and less stubborn. Lastly, let me say I'm a fan of the fine tip bottle. If you're clumsy, like me, and squirt out too much paint, you can simply unscrew the cap and put the paint back with a palette knife. Good luck trying to squeeze back paint into a tube. Now, two things that I think are not so good. First one being the worst opacity. It worked to my advantage since I could still see my line art slash sketch and that way get it back, but I prefer to be in control myself. I would rather dilute it than having it semi-opaque out of the box, because that's what they are. They are semi-opaque even though it says otherwise. The other thing is that some colors exhibit a slight gloss. The finish is still matte, but if you look at the painting from certain angles, you can tell there is an ever so slight gloss. For some reason, this isn't the case with every color. Holbein and Liquitex also feel different to the touch. Holbein feels chalkier, whereas Liquitex feels slightly plasticky. Now, what's my verdict? Both brands have strengths in different departments. That's why I can say for my part that I'm happy about this purchase. The paints exceeded my expectations and it's so much fun painting with them. I felt less time pressure and it felt very relaxing, simply knowing there's enough paint to work with, knowing these paints are neither rare nor pricey, and they are just the perfect addition to my Holbein paints. They complement each other. If you don't own any acrylic gouache, I can highly recommend Liquitex brand. They feel high quality, come in a big variety of colors, and even though by no means are they cheap, I feel they are amazing value for the money. And they are still significantly cheaper and easier to get. Mind you, Holbein acrylic gouache is always low on stock, and the current hype contributes to it. That's it for the review part. Enjoy the rest of the painting process and I'll see you in a bit.
Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you think Liquitex acrylic gouache is a legit alternative to Holbein. Maybe some of you even prefer Liquitex over Holbein. So I really hope that this was insightful. Please consider liking or subscribing. I'm new to YouTube and this will show me that you want to see more content from me. It encourages me and motivates me and just lets me know that I did not waste your time. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.